So we're going to continue our look at what makes land plants different than their carophyte ancestors, and we'll entitle this next flowchart just the continuation of those derived traits of plants. So we'll look at derived traits of plants, Roman numeral 2. And of course, whenever we mention derived traits, we are talking about traits found only in the organism in question, plants, and not in the organism that was previously mentioned, let's say, the carophytes. So, two more derived traits that are important to understand, especially in regards to plant life cycles and plant origins and how plants uh, do what they do best. So, one of those derived traits is the following. Plants have walled spores produced in a specific structure to plants known as the sporangia. So, it's a very easy to remember place where the spores are produced are the sporangia, and spores come from the sporangia. Sporangia is the plural, the, the uh, singular would be sporangium, and sporangia is the plural. So many plants have sporangia, one plant has a sporangium. So what does this really mean? A sporangia, sporangium, uh, are going to be multicellular organs, so we're already different because of this multicellularity as compared to the caraphytes. Multicellular organs in sporophytes. So that makes sense, right? Sporophytes, plants that produce spores, have a sporangium. Sporophytes that produce spores. So very simple right there. Nothing too crazy. So multicellular organs is the key here. So we have a very advanced organ system within plants, which you would never think of because plants look so simple on the outside, but they have a lot of inner workings that do have very similar systemic components just like we do. So basic idea here is that you have uh, sporophytes, okay, or sporocytes, I should rather say. So sites now refers to cells. So spore cells, which are going to originally be 2N, but remember, sporophytes are very good at doing what? Meiosis, okay, and meiosis is going to happen in the sporangium. So we'll do meiosis right now through this process of meiosis, and we know that through meiosis we take a diploid, whatever it may be, cell, sporocyte in this situation, and turn it into a nice haploid spores. And that's of N. So 2N to N, sporocytes to spores, that's what happens in the sporangium. Now, a little bit more on spores. What is What are their components? What do they really mean? Spores are produced by plants, okay? They're also produced by fungi. They're also sometimes produced by some multicellular protists, from my knowledge at least. But spores specifically in plants, what we have to remember, are haploid, thus the N that I put right next to it, reproductive, so repro for reproductive, cells, let me rewrite that, cells that grow via mitosis, okay? So they're produced via meiosis, but grow via mitosis. Now, why is there confusion there? Why is there a distinction? That's because plants undergo alternation of generations. You're going to start a generation via meiosis and then produce, continue that generation via mitosis, in essence. A haploid reproductive cell that grow um, via mitosis into a familiar multicellular gametophyte now. So now, once you, st once you are a gamete, right, you are a spore and you don't get fertilized, you don't match up with another spore, you're going to grow, you're going to still grow regardless, via mitosis, into a multicellular, larger gametophyte plant. We'll get into the gametophytes in just a second. So gametophyte, the origin is because of they were once a gamete, right? They were once just a spore, a haploid reproductive cell. And they eventually turn into a larger plant, thus the name gametophyte via mitosis, of course. Finally, last thing to remember is the fact that all of this is going to be encompassed within a spore wall, something we actually covered. Remember the sporopollenin? Sporopollenin. Though a similar characteristic between both plants and caraphytes, the sporopollenin is also found within the sporangia, uh, larger organ structure. So the caraphytes don't have this large organ, but they do have the sporopollenin that's conserved, let's say. This was a, a conserved structure that continued throughout the evolution of plants, and the reason why is because it provides a great amount of resilience. So this is a very resilient structure that has been conserved throughout evolutionary history of plants. So that's our sporangia side. The sporangium is 
there to make spores, and spores develop via mitosis into gametophytes, and this is protected by a sporopollenin structure. There we go. That's a summary of that part. Finally, last thing about derived traits is the fact that we also have in plants multicellular uh, gametogenia. Okay, gametogenia or genia, whatever you want to call it. So sporangia and gametogenia or gametogenia. I've heard both. Um, this is going to be a little bit different than our sporangia story. Here, this is going to be something exclusively produced by, let's look at the juxtaposition here, the comparison, produced by sporophytes, our sporangia, produced by then gametophytes, our gametogenia, okay, or gametogonium, whatever it may be, gametophytes, okay, plants that are of that gamete structure. And then finally, what's going to happen here is that this structure, this gametogenia, is going to be exclusively in charge and does this, it produces gametes, that's the name, gametogenia, via mitosis. Okay, remember alternation of generations. You can switch between the haploid and diploid uh, structure depending on the multicellularity needs of the plant. Here we have the need of continuing uh, gamete production via mitosis, and that's going to happen in the gamete gametogenia. Here, this is not going to happen. Here, the process that underlies this is meiosis. Okay, don't forget that distinction here. Mitosis and meiosis are different, separated, and thus two different parts of the flowchart. Now, there's going to be specific parts within a multicellular gametogenia female plant and also male part to the plant. So a lot of people know this, that plants have both male and female parts, and we'll distinguish them now. So in a the female part, the female gametogenia of, a, of plants would be the archegonium. Okay, so this is a subset of a gametogenia. Okay, a type of gametogenia would be the archegonium. So that's a singular because it starts and ends with I-U-M. This is multi this is a plural, I-A. So what is the female archegonium? This is the structure that produces eggs. Okay, produces those egg cells. So plants do this as well. Some people find that interesting, okay, that they do this. And this is also going to be the explicit site of fertilization. And when we say fertilization, we of course mean when sperm meets egg. And this is actually going to occur sometimes within one single plant. It's going to happen all within the same structure, the same gametogenia structures. And then in males, it's a little bit different. The male part of the plant would not be the archegonium anymore. It would actually be called the anthridium. Um, some people just call this the anthers. And this is the anthridium of the males. This is where we're going to have the production and release of sperm. So we produce plus release sperm from this structure. Now, what are we doing one more time? We're producing gametes. How are we producing the sperm and egg? Through a myto mitotic process because this is in a gametophyte. Okay? But in the sporangia, we have a little bit of a different process. This is a meiotic process that takes a sporocyte and turns it into a spore, and the spores can on their own develop into a multicellular gametophyte. So here, we don't need any sort of fertilization, we don't need any sort of influence from a male or female part, we have everything occurring in one structure. Here, we sometimes will need this fertilization in order to continue this process. This is why we have an alternation of generations, different life cycles based on the different needs of a plant, based on the different environments and characteristics and things that are going on within the plant life cycle that we'll get into in more detail later. So those are our second set of derived traits.